Hey guys and gals, now we're here for Guys and gals, now we're here for Drake Wing Gaming. Some of you may on Twitter the gaming drag today. I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Temptations Ballad. So yeah, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now up for as little as five dollars. Y'all can help support the channel and get awesome rewards like permanent access to our community Discord server and full access to upcoming not safe for work videos. All those for our patrons, y'all. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you are up. Let's go. Alrighty. <clears throat> Alright. Maeve suddenly placed a gentle hand on her shoulder with a pointed look. Gautier, why don't you put the... Well, why don't you put the boy down? I was interpreting that sentence very differently than how she meant it. Both Artemy and the urchin blinked at her with surprise. Huh? Well, as you wish. Emil eyed Maeve warily as he was dropped back onto his feet. What angle are you trying at, mate? None whatsoever. You may leave. The urchin squinted. What? Uh, I'm free to go? Just like that? Maeve kneeled down to face the boy at eye level. I've seen your record, young man. You've stolen a wealth of goods and valuables, and yet you're still on the street in rags. You've been caught and arrested many times, but always escape. There's a simple explanation here. You're being taken care of in exchange for your work. Not very well, but taken care of nonetheless. By the Thieves' Guild, perhaps? The urchin grinned and puffed his chest out proudly. Well, I ain't afraid to admit it. I'm one of their best. And they care for me better than that orphanage of this shit city ever has. Maeve nodded patiently. Indeed, you're a talented thief. Always managing to trick people with your youthful charm. The Thieves' Guild is lucky to have you. Her eyes narrowed. Tell me, young man, what do you plan to do once you're older? Emil looked taken aback. Huh? What do you want about? It's a simple question. What is your plan after you've outgrown your usefulness at the Thieves' Guild? The urchin faltered for a bit, but growled stubbornly. Hey! Don't, don't you go putting words in their mouth! The guild ain't ever gonna just leave me hanging. Maeve was silent. She gently reached out and grasped the boy's hand. Her thumb brushed over his bony wrist, her eyes drifting across his thin, malnourished figure. Yes, I can see how they care for you. However, in the future, if you ever find yourself in need of a friend, House Osmia would be glad to have a man of your talents. Find one of our stands in the Market District and tell them you are a friend of Maeve's. My doors are always welcome to you. A mix of suspicion and utter bewilderment swam across Emil's face. Why would a fancy pants noble ever want to help a nobody like me? What's the catch, lady? Maeve simply smiled underneath her veil. Friends help friends. That's just how that works. That's just how the world works, young man. She got up and turned to leave, beckoning for Artemy to follow her. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to help my knight friend here figure out who was behind her jewelry mugging. Good day to you. Come along, Gautier. Huh? Right away, my lady. Emil was left gaping, was left gaping and stunned as the two left without another word. <laughs> Interesting turn of events there. They walked for a small distance with Artemy glancing back at the boy in bewilderment. You're really just going to let him go? We didn't even get any of the answers we were looking for. Maeve peered at her tiredly. My dear Gautier, I say this with the utmost respect. Has anyone ever told you that you've got the social awareness of a brick? Not everyone will be coaxed into aiding you through threats and closed fists. Hey, wait up! Hmm. As though on cue, Emil caught up with them in a, with a sheepish pout. The urchin glanced around the street cautiously before leaning in close. Okay, I didn't. you didn't hear it from me, but the day before I ran into the nighty here, Emil jerked his head towards Artemy, a guy came up to me and told me that a lady knight was going to come out of the church district with an easy score. He told me that I'd make mad money if I stole her package, and that it took the that it and took it to the black market at Rotten Reds. He even paid me like ten gold to go through with it. I was psyched, but the whole thing smelled fishy. Yeah, I usually had to pay for good tips like this. Artemy stared at the urchin in surprise, while Maeve tried the best to hide her "I told you so" look behind her veil. We appreciate your help. Could you describe the man you spoke with? Emil scratched his head. Well, he was this youngish guy. A little older than you two? And it was this bright blue peacock. I heard me and Maeve exchanged glances. The only peacocks in Axia are the royal family. And the only one who's left is... Prince Cassius? That can't be right. This means that the prince sent me a, on a mission to deliver his rubied crown and then paid this boy to intercept and sell it on the black market. Okay, I thought, I, I thought it was the prince at first too, but that can't be right, can it? I saw him at the festival today. The guy was so nervous he couldn't even walk straight. But the guy who gave me this tip, he... It was almost kind of scary. 
Real cold and stern like he was. Almost didn't recognize him because of how different they were. Emil cleared his throat and sheepishly stuffed his hands in his pockets. Looks like an elf water time. Oh, that's good. All right. Anyway, that's all the darn info I've got for you, Maeve smiled. We thank you for your cooperation, Emil. Here, have ten gold pieces for your troubles. The urchin shook his head with a mischievous grin. Nah, keep it. Ain't no money worth a, worth a noble owing you a favor, eh? I'll be seeing you around, friend. Heh. <laughs> with that, Emil ran off down the street and out of sight. Maeve chuckled as she watched him go. That one learns fast, doesn't he? I'm more impressed by your negotiation skills, my lady. You convinced him to disclose his secrets without threatening him or anything. Not all tools need sharp edges, Gautier. More importantly, I'm worried about what this means. Maeve's eyes narrowed as she processed this new information. I can only conclude that the prince did not want the rubies to arrive at the, pa at the royal palace at all. His goal was to scatter the rubies to the people in the underground black market. If he hired a lowly merchant to do this, it must mean he wasn't too picky about who got their hands on them. She clicked her tongue thoughtfully. And shortly afterwards, a demon shows up in Axia. Gautier, do you have any inklings as to where the rubies are? Hmm. The bo well, the cloaked maid stole two of the rubies during our encounter at the fighting ring. As for the other two, one was immediately purchased by an anonymous buyer. The last one disappeared from the market without notice. Maeve's brow furrowed. As this cloaked mage already ha if this cloaked mage already has two of the rubies, why send a demon to attack your friend? Unless... The druid's eyes narrowed. Tell me, Gautier, how trustworthy is this, is this Kaladai Bonebreaker? Maeve faltered. He is my friend! Though he may be infamous for underhanded schemes, I have faith that he has good intentions at heart. He would never do something that, that could jeopardize this mission. Even as she spoke, Artemy cursed herself for the doubt plugging her voice. Maeve did not look convinced either, but she did not speak it. Then I will trust in your judgment for now. Moving forward, I think our next course of action should be to investigate our nervous little prince. What? I can never be so bold as to accuse his highness of wrongdoing. There is no accusation. Your mission is on his highness's behalf, is it not? Then it is more than reasonable to request an audience for information. Maeve smiled. And given that House Osmia is aiding you in your search, I hope you have the courtesy to include me in your meeting with Prince Cassius. I... I... Uh... Uh, of course. Kind of froze up there. Then matters are settled for now. It is time for us to depart. I look forward to speaking with you, with you again alongside His Highness. Pretty slick. Pretty slick, and she knows what she's doing. She knows how to play the game. The noble bowed and quietly dismissed herself. Artemy was left alone in the street, suddenly feeling very cold and lost. A light chill hung in the air, the sun dipping low on the horizon. Cole's feet wobbled unsteadily against the cold cobblestone as he scanned the market plaza through hazy eyes. His senses felt heavy with exhaustion, but he was never one for healthy decisions. He could rest after finding Hamish. Shouldn't be too difficult. Few people were still around after the battle in the streets. Cole perked up as he spotted the older hyena resting by the fountain in the market plaza. Hamish looked up, unsurprised to see him. Cole hesitated for a moment. Hey. Hey. Cole felt Hamish glance over his wounds with a hint of worry. Like, you know, water time. Glad to see you're out and about again. How are you feeling? Like shit. But you know, alive. That's something. An awkward, an awkward air hung between them. After a moment, Cole quietly squeezed. Scooted over to sit next to Hamish on the fountain's edge. Hey, uh... Thanks again for saving me. And, you know, sorry. For being a brat and whatnot these past few days. Years, basically all the time. A small laugh rumbled from Hamish's throat. There's no need to apologize. It's all part of a raising a kid, I suppose. Cole paused. Maybe. But I've been kind of an awful son. and You didn't really deserve any of it. He hung his head low. So, uh, sorry. Again. Hamish chuckled and reached down to pat his head. There was a moment of surprise on his face when Cole didn't shake him off. You did well in that fight today. Good tactics, quick on your feet, using what you had on hand. 
Of course, ideally, I would have preferred that you had gotten out unharmed, but you're alive. Hamish flashed a warm smile. I'm proud of you. Cole felt his chest flutter for a moment before he pulled out his cheeks. He pulled, puffed out his cheeks indignantly. Well, all those tactics and strategy lessons you drilled into me were finally useful for once. Hmm. I'm surprised you actually paid attention to my lessons. Cole scowled. Just a little bit. Papa keeps raving on about hearing the brains behind the crew. Guess I was at least kind of interested. Hamish smiled whilst hiding a small laugh. I see. Has Marrow given you the talk yet? The one with the whole accepting you for who you are and can tell him anything. Puh. I figured you were the one who... You were the one who put him up to it. That was like only 10% of the talk. Papa spent the other 90% rambling about how you were working your ass off and I should be nicer to you. Hmm. Of course he did. Speaking of which... Can we talk? The air grew tense once more. Cole fidgeted and bit his lip, considering his next words carefully. Back in the fight with that demon. That was Hail of Thorns. At first I thought maybe you were just sticking arcane crystals on your arrows, but... The effects were too precise to be borrowed from a stored spell. Using Longstrider to kick and launch her across the street was a clever trick, too. Cole watched the Elder Hyena closely. Hamish's expression was strained, but was kept carefully calm. You're spellcasting Ranger, aren't you? Yes. Since when? A long time ago, maybe a year or so after I met your father. Does Papa know? No. Irritation clawed at the back of Cole's chest. So you spent this entire time trying to convince me to out myself to Papa when you're too much of a coward to do it yourself? A bit hypocritical, don't you think? The soft warmth on Hamish's face disappeared as he peered down at his hands with a hint of guilt. Maybe a little. Yes. He looked up at Cole with pleading eyes. Out of the two of us, Mara is least likely to be hurt by you. I just thought, maybe you could soften the blow before I break the news to him. Oh please, is that Papa could ever stay mad at you for more than a few minutes? Hamish suddenly looked very tired. It was the exhaustion of someone that carried a silent weight for years with no outlet or relief. Sometimes, years of love and trust have a way of unexpectedly slipping out from under you. Second meal. Water time. Especially for someone like me. Hamish peered up at Cole with a soft smile. You, though? You are Marrow's son. He loved you from the moment you were brought into this world. You were nothing but a crying, whimpering bundle. No courage, no great achievements to your name, just you. Yet he loves you all the same, and will continue to love you no matter what, who you become in time. So you want me to tell him that I'm a mage? He cares about you just as much, though. I don't see why you can't tell him yourself. Hamish let out a deep, ragged sigh. Your father's relationship with magic is complicated. Our relationship is complicated. If he knew I was keeping this secret for so long, well... I'm not sure what he'll do. Oh, come on! As if Papa would be anything but understanding to you. Oh, excuse me, y'all. Don't act like he'd actually get mad, Cole let in a disbelieving huff. Why does Papa hate magic so much? He was he always dances around the question, but you know. But you know, don't you? Elder Hyena shook his head firmly. That's not my place to say. I promised him that I wouldn't tell, just as I didn't tell him about your, about your bardic abilities. More secrets. More dancing around each other while you fluttered between us like the world's saddest little passenger pigeon. Passenger pigeon? Why can't you just tell me? You know I'll find out eventually. Hamish looked torn. You keep a fair share of secrets as well, Cole. I won't betray Marrow's trust. Something in Cole snapped. You're full of nothing but secrets too, and so is Papa. But I'm expected to just spill everything out while you two keep everything to yourselves. You asked me to talk and be open, so here I am. You practically know everything about me. But the moment I ask for a tiny bit in return, it's suddenly too difficult. This house is full of nothing but hypocrites. Cole growled and stood up, shoulders shaking. His heart pounded heavily against his chest as unvented frustration spilled forth. If you won't tell me, fine. I don't need you to talk. I'll pry it out of you myself. Hamish caught the flicker of arcane light across Cole's eyes just a second too late. He leapt to his feet, panic gripping his chest. Don't! Detect thoughts.
Holy shit, what timing. What timing indeed. Oh my goodness, Alarm Chan girl, you... Woo, you know how to leave them hanging, don't you, girl? Ooh, those cliffhanger endings. They, they always bring y'all back for more. Anyway, thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to li don't forget to like, comment, just but don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell, and uh, check out that Patreon if y'all can. Anyway, I love you all. I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye bye.